Okay, so this was the fall 2021 AMC 10B and the AMC 12B. First, a quick statement. I will have another like feedback thought process about this whole test and where we go from here aftermath kind of video like I did in the February tests. Um, first, I just want to say, what are my thoughts, just immediate thoughts of this test? If you were taking the AMC 10, I there was a if you got frustrated, I think that's valid. There there was even me, I'm I'm usually pretty good at at not being frustrated. There were a couple problems that man, I kept trying this way and then that way and then this way and it there was way too much time lost and you start to feel that pressure, you feel the seconds, the sands of the hourglass draining out, the pressure starts to increase. You have to skip and you didn't want to skip because you really wanted to get that right and you told yourself you should, it's only number blank, and then you didn't. And so I understand how those things occur. Um, I don't know what can be said about that. I, there's not, the main thing I guess you could say is this, not every performance is going to go as you desire. That's just how it is. Even the greats in every sport have a performances that they don't, don't go as well as they would like. They don't win their championship. They don't win their game. And these are professionals, right? And, and you too as well. If you had a bad outing, that's it. It's a bad outing, okay? Um, in addition, I'll have further thoughts on, on the direction we might wanna go in depending on how we performed. Now, if you are somebody who hit a home run, right? You uh, really knocked this one out. You got 23 out of 25. Uh, let's probably resist flexing in the forums. Uh, you know who you are. You're like, or the people I'm talking about, like, oh, do you think that 144 is enough to qualify? I can't, I'm not sure. Maybe you guys could tell me. Uh, no, they know that they should know. I mean, if you're getting that kind of score and you don't know, I don't know. Uh, I just, let's try to not do that in my comments, especially. Let's respect people who had a little bit of a struggle with them, this one and understand where they're coming from. My guess is if you scored 111 or above, I mean, I don't think that's the cutoff, but I would say it's safely a comfortable number. If you're above that number, my guess is you qualified for the AIME on the AMC 10. For AMC 12, I don't have a prediction on that yet. Again, my prediction is not a 111 cutoff. It is that that would be safe, like for, for fully safe, okay? Um, I think the top 2.5%, I'm getting a feeling around 105 or 106.5. Again, top 2.5% is no longer the cutoff, right? Uh, you can take as high as a percent as they want now. It's dependent on how many people took the test. And so, yeah, don't think that's the cutoff. That's just my gut feeling for where the top 2.5% delineation will be after taking the test myself. The main thing is, again, if you had a bad outing on this, I really feel for you guys. There'll be a video coming out talking over the weekend about where we go from here. Part of that will discuss the off season, which is what we call the period immediately following the exams, three to six month time, and what we should focus on there. Stay tuned for that one. But for now, let's get started on this test. From problem number one, what is the value of one, two, three, four, all this, right? Your ability to make observations and capitalize on them as quickly as possible is crucial to how fast you can run through the first few problems of the test. And to be honest, every second counts because some of the later questions, when you're solving it five, six different ways and none of them are seeming to bear fruit and your, your emotions are starting to go wreck, uh, these seconds will be crucial to give you time to recover so that you can move on to other questions that you may be able to do. So what observation am I talking about? You should notice they're all four the same types of numbers, right? There's a one and two, a three and four, and all of them, and the one occupies all the positions as do all the rest. In fact, it just shifts over three, four, one, two, and then four, one, two, three. Because of that, we can rewrite this as one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 you just rearrange it. 
add the first column, get 10, add to get one, four, three, two, and one is 10. Again, you have 10 plus one is 11, and 11, and 11, and that's gonna be it, 11,110. If you saw this observation, you capitalize on it pretty quickly as I did, great. If you didn't, don't worry. This is what we gain experience for so that we can learn to make these kinds of observations. With that said, let's get on to problem two. All right, continuing with the fall 2021 AMC and, or 10B and 12B, both of them, problem number two. What is the area of the shaded figure shown below? This is an isosceles triangle minus the smaller isosceles triangle, and it's really just half base. This is a typical shaded region problem. I'm sure most of the experienced test takers were not too troubled by this, and if you're inexperienced, don't worry, this is how you gain experience. So half base, be careful, this is on five, but the base is not five, the base is four. So it's half the base times the height, which is five of, what we're looking at is the whole triangle as if this was shaded too. And then we're gonna subtract the unshaded, typical standard shaded region approach. Minus half times, the other one has a base of four, but a height of two, so it's four and two. So half of 20 is 10, Half of this is four, 10 minus four is six, answer choice B, and we're doing problem three. All right, in my opinion, this is the question where the separation between experienced and inexperienced really starts as far as the AMC 10B was concerned. So you might have, if this was your first time taking this test or even second, this might have been a point where you kind of got a little panicky, a little frustrated, even though it's only number three, which actually probably alarmed you even more and caused you a little bit of additional anxiety. If you were an experienced solver at this point, meaning you've done almost all the past tests, you've done several AOPS books, this is your third time taking it, things like that, you know, you've got a lot of experience, then there's a lot of mechanical things in here that you're gonna recognize and you probably didn't have too much trouble with it. But be aware, people who are newer to the competitions might have had more difficulty with this. The expression this, minus that is equal to the fraction p over q in which p and q are positive integers whose greatest common divisor is one, a fancy way of saying it doesn't simplify, okay? So what is p? The first thing is you're gonna use this concept here. If you were subtracting two fractions, you pull the d up to the a to get a d, the b up to the c to get b c, and you multiply the denominators to get b d. You don't have to know that, it just shaves a couple seconds of time off. You could multiply this by 2021 over 2021, and this one by 2020 over 2020, and get the same thing. Okay, so now we're going to have 2021 squared minus 2020 squared over 2020 times 2021. Now, you might recognize this is the difference of squares, and a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. You also, uh, a minus b though, notice is one, right? So what I'm saying is 2021 minus 2020, and the other one is the same thing with the plus sign in between. This is one, which means the other expression is the numerator. So uh, you also might know the difference in consecutive squares is the sum of their bases. That's a small notebook concept that I have in mind because I think it's of critical importance. So um, I'm gonna write this as 2021 plus 2020 over 2021 times 2020. Now, why don't I just add it? Well, that comes from experience because I can see a potential benefit to leaving it as a sum. And what is that benefit? Let's say that there is a divisor to 2021, a prime divisor, okay? And actually, later in the problem in the test, you'll probably need to know the prime factorization of the year, which you should always know going into the test year. We haven't seen one in a while where we needed the prime factorization of the year, but I'm pretty sure it comes up on this test if I remember correctly. So uh, the thing is, uh, let's say 43, right? You know 43 goes into this number. Is it possible that it goes into this number? No. And if it doesn't go into both, then there's no way you could factor it out and cancel with this. So any prime device is critical, because if you can't conclude this, you're gonna have a tough time finishing the problem. Any prime divisor of this will not be a divisor of this. And the reason why is they differ by one. 
and since they differ by one, there's no way that, because you know how things work. For example, let's say you've got, I don't know, the number uh, 24. It's divisible by three. You're gonna need to add a multiple of three to get a result that is a multiple of three. If these are not both multiples of three, neither is the final result. That's a critical thing you have to be able to conclude. And so if I add anything that's not a multiple of three to this, then the whole thing's not a multiple of three. So let's say this is divisible by prime number P. This one's not. So I cannot factor out any primes because they only differ by one. One is not the multiple of anything except for one, right? So you're not gonna be able to factor anything out. Therefore, nothing will cancel with this no matter how it factors. I mean, the other one's like 101 times two times five, but again, uh, you don't need, none of these are gonna go into both of those numbers. And so since this is a product, it would have to go into both. I'd have to be able to factor it out. There's no way that you can factor it out. So you end up with this. The answer is E4041. I don't remember for sure if you needed the prime factorization, but I thought I used it later in the test somewhere. We'll see as I continue filming. Let's get on to problem four. Okay, so continuing with the fall 2021 AMC 10B, this is problem four, also the 12B problem three. At noon on a certain day, Minneapolis is N degrees warmer than St. Louis. So we don't know if the time matters right now. I'm gonna write Minnesota and St. Louis. And we're gonna say that it's X here and X plus N here because it's N degrees warmer than St. Louis. At 4 p.m., the temperature in Minneapolis has fallen by five degrees. So now it's gonna be X plus N minus five, while the temperature in St. Louis has risen by three. You've got X plus three. At which time, the temperatures in the two cities differ by two. Okay. What is the product of all possible values of n? The thing is, we don't know which of these two is bigger right now. And so we're going to kind of need to do the absolute value thing where you're going to subtract, right? And that needs to be two. So I didn't actually write the absolute value on my paper when I was solving. I just thought about the necessity of it because if that one's bigger, it's going to be reversed. And so I set it equal to two and negative two. I did notice that the X will cancel and N minus five minus three will be N minus eight. I set that equal to two. I also set it equal to negative two. So you would get that N is 10 and N is six. 10 times six is 60. Again, the reason that you don't know is you don't know if when it went down five and this up three, if that made this expression larger. One more time, if you don't know how the difference in the absolute value works, it's going to be kind of a piecewise function. It is this without the absolute value if A is greater than B or equal to. And it's going to be the opposite, B minus A, if A is less than B. That's a small notebook concept. You need to have it so that at this point, you're not losing time. So 10 times six is 60. The only thing alarming to me is what about this 120? What if there was a possible difference of two and I just haven't thought about it? So if I think about it, um, how could I have a difference of two? If this one goes down five and up three, you've got the X's canceling. Could I possibly get N equals two? If N was two, right? Let's just say N was two. Minneapolis would have been X plus two and this would have been X. If I go down five from here, I'm now at X minus three. If I go up three from here, I get X plus three. Um, that's going to be a problem because those don't differ by two. They differ by six. Therefore, I know this is impossible and I know that it's this and that knowledge that you did not make a mistake for certain, absolutely critical as you advance forward in the test. Otherwise, it plagues your thoughts as you go forward and causes more mistakes to happen on the back end as the stress levels increase. And they're going to be increasing pretty soon here. Let's get to it. 
We are doing the fall 2021 AMC 10B, problem five, the 12B problem four, and this is not a promotion. This is a box of Cheerios though. I don't really advocate you eat Cheerios, you eat whatever you want, um, but they're here for a reason. Why might I have this? Let's say that you uh, rolled out of bed one morning and you decided to have, or maybe you ate it at night, no judgment, uh, and you decided to have yourself a bowl of Cheerios. If you ask yourself, what did you just eat? And you would tell people Cheerios, but you would not be telling the full truth. You did not eat Cheerios. What you ate was vitamin D. You can see here, right? Vitamin D at a certain amount. It's kind of probably blurry because it's not made to be focused on this. Vitamin D, calcium, iron, potassium, fiber, sodium, cholesterol, carbohydrates, trans fat, saturated fat, total fat, right? All these different things, vitamin B6, niacin, thiamine, all these things. That is what you ate. If you look at this and you see a box of Cheerios, that's the problem. If you look at this problem here, let n equal eight and you see an eight and that's all you see and you don't instantly see all the things that are in that box like that, then you're gonna have to change your frame of mind. I do not ever look at this and see eight, ever. I see eight and instantly it's two to the third. Instantly, instantly, instantly. If you see 24, I don't. I see two to the third times three to the first. You say 36, I say two squared times three squared. I've trained my mind to see it as its prime factors, provided that it's a low enough number. Obviously, if it's a huge number, I'm not gonna know instantly what the prime factorization is, but most things under 100 I can do within a second or two, okay? So at the same time, when I see eight, I recognize it as the cube of two, and you're gonna have to train your mind to do that as well. So this becomes n equals, I don't even think, I don't even read the sentence. I just look and I know, I know what they want because it's happened so many times. It's pattern-based behavior. And you're gonna see two to the third to the 2022, which is two to the 6,066, which the following is equal to n over four. Did you just say four? No, it's two squared. This is n, we just talked about this, right? So this is two squared, subtract, get two to the 6,064. Then look for this first. Do you see it? There's the only two right here. I don't. Let's start making it something different. If I made it two squared to the x, this product 2x needs to equal that. So x would need to be half of this, which is 3,032, which is e. And you can do this problem if I'm not explaining it in 30 seconds or less. Tops. Okay, so train your mind to look at numbers and see beyond the veneer. See behind what it shows, look for its ingredients. Don't see it at its face value. The same thing's kind of true of people. Let's get on to the next problem.